Hi everyone, my name is Ronnie Bandini. I make strange machines mentioned in books and literature. From time to time, I also make paid prototypes combining electronics, coding, 3D modeling, and also machine learning. I live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Maybe you know Argentina because of the tango, the soccer, or the meat. But we have also an interesting story about a rain-making machine. I have several projects published. Some of them are Rashuelomatic, a device to generate reading paths for Hopscotch novel by Julio Cortázar, the machine to think of Gladys, based on an intriguing short story by Mario Lebrero, a tiny Kindle for reading haikus, and the literature dispenser, a machine to get short stories printed on tickets, among other machines. The project I am showcasing this time is something called the Rain Making Machine. First of all, I would like to explain one little thing. The name of the project could be misleading. While there is a discipline named Claviculture that focuses on producing rain, this is a homage machine to a real story that happened in Argentina almost 90 years ago. Uh, in those years, an inventor named Juan Baigo Rivelar was using a custom-made machine to detect minerals. When he observed unexplicable rains, he modified and tuned the device to detect uh, minerals into a rain-making machine. According to the newspapers, he traveled to dry zones in Argentina like Santiago del Estero and San Juan. He promised rain for certain dates and rain occurred. He did this several times, but he never let anyone inspect his machine. Eventually, his popularity faded away, and the rain-making machine was never found. A book about this Juan Baigorri Belar story was recently published, including some statements with technical details. So the aim of this project was to remake his machine, or at least a version of his machine using those statements which I tell you in advance with today's knowledge. They are incomplete, cryptic, and sometimes even preposterous. For this project, I have used an Arduino Nano 33 BLA Sense, a board I really like since it is tiny, it has onboard sensors, and is powerful enough even for machine learning projects. I am also using a two-channel relay, a 5-volt, 35 kilos electromagnet, a 12-volt, 60 watts Peltier Soul, one selector, one toggle switch, a vintage 5-volt uh, light bulb, two analog viewmeters, an antenna from a CRT TV, a vintage enclosure, and some 3D printed parts. So let's go back to the statements now. There, Baigo Rivelar talk about atmospheric waves. So I have used the Arduino on board barometer to read atmospheric pressure. Baigo Rivelar talk about certain chemical and radioactive materials being manipulated. So I use a small stainless steel cup to hold components and that is placed over a Peltier cell. I put a mix of phosphorus and charcoal here, white phosphorus and charcoal. In Civil War times, after gunpowder battles, rain was very likely to happen. A possible gunpowder formula is 75% nitrate, 15% charcoal, 10% sulfur. Due to Argentine Asado Grill, I had phosphorus and charcoal available in my house, and in any case, I did not expect to produce rain. By Gorribelar formula was also a secret, so that is my mix of preference. By the way, I did not use radioactive materials, first of all, because I don't have them, and also because I watch the Chernobyl documentary and I kind of appreciate my own life. Baigo Rivelar also talked about electromagnetism, so I have an electromagnet connected to a relay as well inside the machine. The period of heat and electromagnetism is regulated by the Arduino according to the progression of the atmospheric pressure. I have coded a simple formula to store one atmospheric pressure reading per minute. 
and detect drops that are usually related to rain coming. Since the coding and the general design were not so challenging this time, I've decided to invest more time in the enclosure and general look of the rain making machine. I found an old timer made in Argentina, this one, that even when it did not resemble the original wooden box, it was perfect, just perfect to contain all the components and controls. And it also had a similar opening mechanism as the original machine. I've added a switch from an old Italian PESA heater, an analog two-channel viewmeter, a vintage light bulb here. Um, regarding the power supply, I've used a dual 12-volt, 5-volt power supply from an old iOmega disc. I had that power supply for years in my drawers, knowing that maybe his time would come. The 12 volts are used only for the Peltier cell. A little note about the Peltier cell. In some articles about the machine, it wrongly says that it generates coal to the stainless steel cup. In my wiring, the Peltier cell generates, in fact, heat. It took a week or so to make the machine without considering the time to get the vintage parts. Most of this time was used to design the 3D parts to fit the components in the enclosure. Um, all this part and to connect this and the antenna. And this is how you operate the rain making machine. The toggle uh, switch turns on the device. Now the barometer inside the Arduino is recording one reading per minute of the barometric uh, pressure, atmospheric pressure, sorry, into the array. After one hour or so, the machine is able to make a rudimentary rain prediction that is displayed in the right viewmeter. Left viewmeter has current atmospheric pressure. If you turn the selector to the right, that prediction will control the timing of the Peltier heating and the timing of the electromagnet. Allegedly, with the right mix of chemical and radioactive materials and leaving the machine running for 50 hours or so, rain could come. Why invest time and effort in a rain-making machine that almost for sure will not make it rain? I firmly believe that the mere existence of any machine articulates with the world and people in ways we as inventors and makers could never imagine. This recording, this event, the whole internet is for sure linked to the mechanical Turk, a machine that allegedly played chess, but it turned out it has a small chess player inside using mirrors. The mechanical Turk inspired Charles Babash to make the first analytic engine, and following this path, a real chess player machine was later a reality. So who knows what kind of influence this machine or any machine and story could have in other people. So this is all for today. I hope you like the project. If you want to get in touch about this or any other machine, again, I am Ronnie Bandini and you can find me on all social platforms by searching Ronnie Bandini. Thank you very much.